Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Carinado Cessna 182. Now one of the neat things about this aircraft is this is a turbocharged version of a very, very, very popular plane. This is a pay -wear plane, but it's one of those things that my local flying club uh, just recently picked up, so I said, you know, I should probably take a little bit of time to get familiarized myself. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we are inside this uh, lovely little office. So the first thing you notice immediately is it's just like a 172. Oh my gosh, there's knee room. What is this? The other thing I gotta love is in the back seat, you could probably actually hold adults on this thing, which I think is actually kind of neat because I can't tell you how many times those little planes just don't have the carry capacity. So let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. Uh, today we went ahead and found a nice little checklist to kind of help us out, kind of keep us honest kind of a thing. I'll go ahead and provide a link to this one inside the uh, description below this video so that if you like to follow along, you can kind of follow along. Some of these things we can do no problem because uh, there's a button for it. Some of these things I'm gonna basically, I guess I'm gonna call it interpret. And obviously some of these things too, um, we're just gonna skip because I'm like that. So first things first, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, make sure the throttle control is open one quarter of an inch. I'm just going to push it forward about that far. It does not take much. We're going to take the propeller control and we're going to ram it all the way forward. We're also going to make sure the mixture control is pulled all the way back. This is a fuel injected aircraft. So what normally what you do at this point is you give the standby battery a quick little try. So to do that, it's pretty cool. We just come over here and go click to the test position. And what it should do is it should have a happy little green light to let you know that it works okay. If it doesn't, it won't. Now if you flip it to arm on the flip side, watch this. Everything flips on. Uh, the reason it does that, of course, is on account of the fact that the standby battery is there in case the regular battery does not. I just think that's kind of a neat touch because a lot of airplanes like this just don't have that capability. So the one thing you did notice probably when we started everything up a few moments ago is we had a bunch of angry lights and things coming on us. Uh, that's all good. That's exactly what we're hoping to see here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip on. I'll go ahead and move this over to the side so it's a little easier for everybody to see. I'm going to go ahead and pop on these two switches here. The first one's going to be my master. Click, click. And we're also going to go over and uh, hit the beacon light. Of course, I always call it the bacon because this is BCN. You're going to get this honking noise, which literally will not go away until I try to silence it. So enjoy the sound for a moment. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip on the fuel pump. Uh, this is basically our method to go ahead and prime the engine. It is a pretty blustery day. It is the middle of the winter here. So the way you, uh, this is always something that kind of blew my mind a little bit, but it's a fuel injected thing. So I'm going to put the mixture control all the way forward. I'm going to go ahead and flip on the fuel pump. It's going to go ahead and uh, give me a stable fuel flow in just a few moments. And then we're just going to pop it to the idle position. It's a little weird. So I click this, watch what happens. You're going to get a little bit of fuel flow. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't show that, weird. And then we're just gonna pull this back and we're gonna go ahead and pop off the fuel pump. Just kind of a way to go ahead and get a little bit of fuel inside the system. Now this thing starts like pie. Now one of my favorite things here is that you're supposed to crank it and then you're supposed to push in the mixture. I don't have a separate button for the mixture. So when I start cranking this thing, I'm probably gonna miss it the first time I do it. All right, look out the window, clear prop, clear prop, clear prop, clear prop, clear prop, clear prop, prop. okie doke. Ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank this sucker. It's gonna catch, I'm gonna push right handle in. Oh, it worked. <laughs> I really did not expect that to work the first time. Got okay, good fingers some days. All right, so uh, the engine's running. We're just going to go ahead and stabilize and get ourselves up to about 1,000 revolutions per minute, comrades. And that will go ahead and uh, make sure everything's all set here. The older version of the 182 had an old school primer. This one's uh, much, much more modern. Of course, we got the two G 1000s as well. So now that the engine is running happily, we always like to double check the oil pressure is coming up, the oil temperature is coming up, uh, TIT and CHT are coming up. Notice we have a TIT indicator on here because we are a turbocharged airplane, which is, uh, in my opinion, is super duper duper cool here. We're going to go double check this. And then finally, we're going to go flip on the nav lights. We're going to pop on both of the Mavionics master buses. And the thing will all light up like a little tree here. And uh, we're pretty good to go. On the G1000, you got to pop that button right there to go ahead and set us all up. So our journey today is uh, not going to be too, too far. We're going to be flying over to Kilo Alpha Sierra Tango, which is a short little ride. Don't worry, though. I'll skip the trip to the fun part where we got to put this thing down on the ground. So I'm going to come down to the direct two button. I'm going to go ahead and uh, dial in our destination here. Again, this is a classic uh, G1000. It's pretty much exactly the same as the one you're probably familiar with in regular flight sim. There's really not a lot of, you know, mystery puzzles or anything that comes along with this particular system. It's just a matter of clicking a couple buttons. Hey, hey, woo, woo. Of course, I have the world's worst uh, mouse for this particular purpose, but that's okay. Okay, eh, eh, of course we could cheat and use the uh, GTN 750, but I'll do that a little later. Do an S, well, give me a T. Okay, A, S, T, we're just flying direct today. We'll just pretend it's VOR. Looks good to me. 
let's take a look we got ourselves the magenta line of safety so that's looking pretty darn good as well so next what we're going to do is we're going to be making our way over to the runway so go ahead and pop up the uh, little uh, checklist here so let's see here all this is done all this is done oil pressure good 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 internal good 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 and we've done all that and now it's just a matter of bringing ourselves over to the destination a couple little things i like to do before takeoff i like to make sure my autopilot pilot's kind of preset and ready to go we're traveling to the west and vfr altitudes today so i'm going to pop up to 5500 feet i've dragged this thing up to tens of not tens of thousands i'm gonna go up to 20,000 feet with this but i have taken this well over 10,000 without any issues thanks to the incredible turbocharger i'm gonna go ahead and uh, select the cdi a few times here just until we got our little gps indication it says gps en route check my little thing a lot of people like to come in here and kind of tweak the different buttons and set that all of course the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and pop on my transponder to let everybody know that i'm going to be taxing and now everything's ready to go Go ahead and take a quick peek around, see if there's uh, anybody kind of in my way. The wind, like I said, is relatively calm today, so I'm not worried about that. Speaking of wind, I'm going to go ahead and hit PFD. I'm going to go wind mode. I'm going to go ahead and set it to option three, which is the correct option. And you can see that we definitely have a favorable one runway. Now, I've got to ask, how on earth does this airplane know the wind's coming from that direction if I'm not moving? Some kind of sorcery, I'm sure. All right, let's go. All you do is release the parking brake, though. This thing will get rolling on you immediately. It does not take anything to get this thing wheeling it really is a powerful airplane for its size all right as always uh, when we're cruising we just want to test the brakes real quick make sure they work feels good i'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of gas i'm just going to make our way kind of down to the end of the runway <gasps> All right, we're getting down to the run-up area here. It's going to kind of go off the side. And we're just going to line ourselves up into the wind here. Whee! This is the first airplane I think I've flown in a long time in a simulator that actually simulates the weight of the wings correctly. All right, let's do it to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run up the aircraft. Let's go and pop up our little list here and make sure we're doing everything correctly. Uh, we're supposed to check the autopilot disconnect button. Uh, we've hit it a few times. We know it works properly. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the flight director is in the off position. I'm going to come down here. Uh, we don't have a button for the flight director. Ooh, that's interesting. But what we will do is we'll take care of the elevator and trim and all that other good stuff here. Trim's right there. I'm just going to press and hold it and get it into the takeoff position. Looks good. We're going to make sure our cow flaps are in the open position. We're going to need those big time for this airplane. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, look around real fast. We'll go ahead and blast this thing up to 1,800 RPM. It does not take much in this airplane. And a little bit too much. Back it up just a little bit. Notice that's only 21 inches. <laughs> that's pretty scary. Yeah, man. There we go. Let's go ahead and do our quick magneto check here. We're just going to switch to that one. Going to lose uh, about 50. Looks good. Back to start. Or back to both, rather. We're going to go click it down to the R. It's going to come back down the same amount. Excellent. Both magnetos are in the same quality. Let's hop that back to part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cycle the propeller handle here. We just need to make sure it works properly. We don't need to jam on it. This isn't a B-17. Awesome. We're going to go pull the throttle all the way back to zero. The engine should go boom, 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 boom. And it basically did. Cool. Go ahead and give it a little bit of gas, and now we're ready for takeoff. Takeoff in this aircraft requires uh, usually one notch of flaps. Technically, you can take off without flaps. I always like to use the one. Uh, the book says that you can use up to 20 degrees if you need to. It's completely up to the particular pilot there. Approach is clear, so I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. Come swing around nice and gentle. This is a good time to make sure all your settings are good. Apparently, according to the plan here, we're supposed to go ahead and disable the 12 volt power. So anybody who's got their little like personal electronic devices charging right now, sorry guys, uh, you're gonna lose that for a minute. All right, we're good to go. 10 degrees of flaps is set. I'm gonna go ahead and apply full power. We're looking at 32 inches. Again, this is a turbocharged version of this plane. Flash is red. We're looking at 2400 RPM, or 23 rather. And we're just gonna let this thing rip down the runway. Off we go. Now, the cool thing is this thing just goes 50 to 60 knots. We're going to lift the front wheel. And by lift, I mean you have to pull it back about that far to get the wheel up if you set your trim right. And then what will happen is we'll get to the magic speed, and this plane will just start lifting up into the air, no problem. So we're just going to go ahead and sit here very, very, very carefully. According to the manual, though, we're supposed to be adjusting the mixture control to getting the proper fuel flow. But I've been having some issues with the fuel flow versus what the book says. I'm not going to argue with it too much. I'm just going to kind of continue flying the plane. So we're going to hold about 70 knots. Everything's clear underneath us. I'm going to go ahead and bring down the flaps. And now we're supposed to accelerate up to 80 knots, which will be about, let's call it 7.5 degrees. Go ahead and 
ahead and make our initial turn towards our course here. Like I said, holding about 80 knots here is going to give us plenty, 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 plenty of power here. And we'll get on our way, no problem. Now, time to decide our type of climb. Now, in this aircraft, I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip on the automatic pilot for a second here. Just to make my life a little bit simpler. I'm going to put the nav mode. We'll go ahead and pop AP. And now it's going to go ahead and dive. I'm going to press a couple buttons on the VS. Again, my VS is represented right there. I'm getting 1,000 feet per minute. We're getting 1,000 feet per minute. We're on course. Now, we have a couple choices as far as climb goes. Uh, we can use 24 gallons per hour, 32 and 24, which is what we're doing right now. We can also use uh, 16 at 25 and 24. Now, for us, um, we're not really in a hurry or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and reduce the power. So we're going to leave the RPM at maximum there. Go ahead and push that forward. Make sure it's all the way forward. There it goes. Excellent. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to pull back on the throttle nice and gently until we get to 25 inches here. No problem right there. Perfect. So now we're at our correct climb. Now what makes this plane great is that we can just sit here and it will go ahead and just sort of chill at that RPM and chill at that manifold pressure until we hit our critical altitude and we can no longer climb. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Next, what we want to do is we want to adjust our airspeed to get us uh, the better performance here for our climb. We have a lot of different choices as far as climbing this airplane goes. At our very least, if we're doing a normal climb, we can do 90 to 100 knots. If we're doing a high performance, we can do about 84 to 82 knots. Uh, right now, we're doing 103, so we're kind of at the peak of normal climb. The nice advantage to normal climb, of course, is that we're still getting 1,000 feet per minute out of this plane, which is an enormous amount, and you're keeping the engine nice and cool, of course, like I said, given the weather right now. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about keeping this engine nice and cool. I'm seeing the cylinder head temperature is right there in the middle, which means whatever I've set this to is probably good. I'll drop, drop it down to about three quarters, and we'll just kind of keep an eye on that every once in a while. The turbine inlet temperature, same. Fuel, everything else is looking really, really good. I didn't turn on my landing light for takeoff, so I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll get you folks uh, right when we get to the top of the climb. All right, we're just about hitting the top of the climb, about 1,000 or 100 feet to go. And you get the lovely view of Oregon here. Again, that's a, um, been quite the snowfall, so everything has uh, kind of turned white on us, which is pretty neat because they didn't need separate graphics for that. Uh, we've got Mount Rainier, Mount Hood kind of off there in the distance, which is kind of neat. Okay, so cruising this aircraft is uh, remarkably simple. Uh, they basically say anything between 15 and 28, anywhere between 2,000 and 24. When you're over 15,000 feet, you're supposed to basically give yourself anywhere between 2,000 and 2,400. So it depends on your particular cruise, what you're trying to achieve here. So for me, I'm going to do uh, kind of like a nice easy cruise though. But what I will do is I'll go ahead and reduce the RPM a little bit to help on cabin noise. So I notice I'm at 25 inches, which is considered acceptable. I could go up to 28 if I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull back the RPM control and we're going to bring it down to 2200. So what that's going to do is it's going to reduce cabin noise and even better, like I said, I don't even have to touch the throttle. Now what makes this aircraft a little weird and a little complicated, and it's probably something on my part I imagine, is the fact that with this particular aircraft, uh, when you're trying to get your exhaust gas temperature set correct, and when you're trying to basically um, get your mixture correct is what I'm trying to say, is you're going to run into problems. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this in the, uh, mixture control back just a little bit. I want to show you what's going to happen here. Nothing, 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 nothing. Notice my RPM doesn't really change. Nothing, 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 nothing. Notice my fuel flow is slowly starting to come down now, indicating I'm getting closer to where I need to be. Now, according to the book, we're supposed to be uh, leaning for best RPM here, but it's very difficult to spot an RPM change. Lean, did you see how the RPM dropped? That means we went way too far. So I'm going to go ahead and push this back in a little bit. And you can see we're getting about, I call it 10 gallons per hour or so, and that seems to be in a pretty good spot. So basically, the best I've been able to discover so far is uh, go ahead and lean the mixture until it starts going down, then push it in until it stops going up. That seems to be kind of the sweet spot. And again, that is not the standard procedure. It's just kind of what I've discovered for this particular plane. Given that we're turbocharged, we probably shouldn't be messing with the mixture handle until we go really, really high. Coming down here, of course, great time to go ahead and slam the cow flaps closed. Now, there's no reason to leave them open during the flight because, um, again, we're just going to stay perfectly cool. But we we want to monitor that cylinder head temperature during the entire duration here. So we got a 5500, uh, we're right on course, uh, we're looking at a 26 minute cruise time, but of course I'll get you folks uh, right at the top of descent. All right, we've got ourselves about 11, 12 minutes to go. It's time to go ahead and start thinking about our descent here. Now, the one downside of this descent is I'm looking off the nose, and there's these really, really big mountains. So if we try to hit 500 feet per minute, which would be pretty good for our ears, we're going to end up basically running smack dab into these things. Now, there's a couple different ways we can fix this. Uh, we can kind of zip through these mountains if we wanted, or, of course, we could kind of, like, do one of those sort of things. But I'm going to go ahead and set up an initial descent, and then we'll go ahead and level off, and then we'll do a kind of a step down. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to select my new altitude. Uh, it's going to be sea level. It's going to be my target, but what I want to do is come down to 3,000 feet first. 
what after you do is you press this arm button that's going to select vertical speed and all you do is dial in the vertical speed you want in this case like i said 500 feet per minute i'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back there's no reason to increase our ground speed during this but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the mixture back in we are going to be under 5,000 in a moment so i'm not too worried about it so what game am i playing i'm playing keep this tas about the same for the most of the descent here and it's going to make it a relatively easy experience for us so the plane's coming down it's time to start thinking about uh, what we're going to need to do as far as our landing goes now landing in this airplane is not too too complicated uh, the big thing you have to remember is when you do go to land this plane you have to be at high rpm which also means if you pull the throttle back soon like you try to land at like a 172 you're going to find the plane just sort of drops out of the sky uh, that's something i had to kind of get used to and don't be surprised if i come a little wide or a little short on my landing it'll be soft enough but it will not be perfect this aircraft is like i said surprising i wanted it to be a 172 but it's clearly its own beastie as far as a landing performance goes but we'll see that when we get a little bit closer let's go ahead and uh, double check our before our landing checklist real quickly before landing i'll uh, make sure our seat belts are right secure fuel sector should be set to both uh, fuel selector should be set to both i like to actually crack this open a little bit because the airplane tends to be under a little bit of load at this time mixture control should be rich which we took care of already we want to make sure the propeller control is pushed all the way in uh, we can do that anytime i'm going to go ahead and do it now while i'm thinking about it why not just gets a little louder uh, we're going to make sure our landing and taxi light switches are in the on position so i'm going to go ahead and flip both of those switches pop them on we're going to make sure the autopilot's off when we land we're going to make sure the uh, cabin power switch is in the off position as well the whole concept here is the idea that you know if people are plugging like i said their personal electronic devices in you don't want them to be playing around with that when you're know, basically coming in for a landing normal landing though super simple it's going to be an airspeed of between 70 and 80. i'm a huge fan of 70. if you're having difficulties smoothly landing the plane try coming at 75. it makes it a little bit easier but like I said, when you pull that throttle back, the plane is uh, going to quit flying. It's kind of like the Bonanza in that regard. Wing flaps, uh, we're supposed to use full. Uh, airspeed is going to basically be 60 knots until the last, if we're doing a short field. 60 knot approaches in this thing are a little hairy. It's not to say that you can't do it. It's just like I was warning before, the plane just stops flying on you. So uh, you're going to end up running into the ground. And of course, if we need to go around or something like that, we can always uh, give it full power and come right back around. All right, there's our lovely airport in the front, and we'll go ahead and zip over to it. All right, there's our destination right off the nose, and the wind is coming right at us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take us into a nice little bank and turn here, and we're going to swing ourselves all the way over to a nice, I guess I want to call it a straight-in approach here. Got to love that little bridge right there. Just ah, so cool. So we're going to come swing around here. This is uh, basically going to be a modified left downwind. So speed-wise, like I said before, the moment you pull the throttle back, look at that. I'm already basically at my approach speed. I'm going to go ahead and pop down that first notch of flaps right away. I do want to slow down. I'm going to bring this thing into a nice gentle left, and we're going to go ahead and line ourselves up with that primary runway here. Go ahead and pop that second notch down. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty tight turn for us, but I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. The plane is usually pretty good. And there's our lovely runway. I'll go ahead and pop that last notch down. Okay, so you can see as soon as I pull the throttle back and drop my flaps, I'm at 65. I'm about ready to stall the plane. This plane simply, like I said, it will just stop flying on you. It is not what you're used to. I'm actually below the minimum approach speed that quickly. So what I'm going to do is smoothly apply some throttle here. I'm going to let the nose come down just a little bit. And we're going to try to pick up a bit of speed. I can actually feel the plane wanting to depart. So that's something you're really, really, really going to have to watch out for. And I really appreciate that the folks who model this aircraft I took the time to get that behavior correct. It really is a 172 that somebody left too many elephants in the back seat. There we are. About 65 knots is uh, pretty good if you're looking for kind of a general speed. Like I say, though, I like to approach at 70 so I can give myself a little bit of extra leeway as far as my approach goes. All right, 70 knots. We're going to do our gumps checks. Gas is good. Undercarriage is good. Mixture is good. Propeller is good. We have our flaps. We have our lights. We have our speed. And we have our switches. Everything is all the way down. Like I said, about 70 knots is what I'm going to hold here. This is one of those aircraft that when you do pull the throttle back, you either want to be on the ground or you want to be very close to it because that lack of control authority is going to be a real surprise for you. We're down just a little bit, but again, we're relatively light today, so it doesn't surprise me in the slightest. All right, there's 70 knots. We're over the end of the runway. This is the fun part. We're going to smoothly pull the throttle almost back. The nose is going to get real heavy. Pull the throttle the rest of the way, and we set the two tires down to the ground just like that. Woohoo! <laughs> Not bad. So now one thing I love about this airplane when they modeled it is if I kick the rudder, the whole plane will actually tilt, and it'll actually roll itself over, which is, I swear, the first time I've ever seen that done properly in a flight simulator. These planes are tremendously top-heavy, and they will flip you over if you're too aggressive with the controls. So I appreciate that, which also means when you are taxing this plane, if you uh, kick the rudder over, whoa! Did you see how the plane almost started tipping? You have to be able to be on top of that. You can't 172 default this particular airplane, which is, ah, 
Ah, perfect detail. So we've reached our destination, and I think this is a pretty good time to call it. Uh, shutting this thing down, just make sure you pop the avionics off first, pull the throttle back, let everything shut off, kill the masters, and you're on your way. Other than that, enjoy.